So here we go. Basically stepped in my way as a blind man for to push her own agenda. And I want you guys to really let that sink in. She had no regard for A, where I was going to. She had no regard for my safety. Her goal was to push her agenda. And that's one thing I want all of you to remember as you move through life, which is that if you want to achieve something, it's up to you to keep focused on that. And it's up to you to maintain that as a priority because other people have their own goals and their own agendas. And they'll usually try to pursue their agenda at the expense of yours, even if it is not righteous, even if it is an Thing to do. And in her case, it was totally a she's essentially getting in the way of someone who is uh, disabled. <laughs> Here we go. And call me a sexy which low key, I can't hate, hate her for being a speaker of the truth. I can't hate her for that. Hey, how you doing? I'm very good. Ooh. Would you like to take a picture with I us? I did that on purpose. I, I, I wanted you to walk Pictures aren't my thing because I can't see them. So there's a couple pieces here. Uh, the dialogue went fairly quick. Number one, uh, she said, would you like to take a picture with us? Which is quite a thing to propose of a blind man. And as much as a blind man can't see the photograph, hence a photograph is of no value to a blind man. Number two, the idea that they were going to charge me cash money for that. It'd be very hard for a blind man to, you know, perhaps you might select the wrong bill. I'm sure they arrange their money in order if they have to use cash. But generally, I found while I was blind, it was easier to use my bank card. But moreover, they would accept money from a blind man for a product or service that he could not utilize, which is quite comical. Furthermore, you hear the young lady state that she got in my way on purpose, which I think that that was obviously the case in as much as those with vision can see that she chose not to move out of the way when I was walking a straight path and she was on it. So there's just a lot there to unpack about human nature, which is number one, uh, people will try to fleece you for a dollar. They don't care if you sick, deaf, blind, brain dead, low IQ, lazy eye. Uh, they don't care. If they could get a dollar out of you, oh, they're getting the work. That's number one. Then number two, you also find that the primitive drivers of the human being, that is the, the, the drive for the lust desire, which controls many of us, is always at work. And so I'm a blind man walking the Las Vegas Strip, and she's essentially trying to and when I try to escape the situation, you see them try to hold me up. And I'm going to give you another lesson on, on the swag and the ism in a second. But we're going to get to that after this footage. I I, you to walk pictures aren't my thing because I can't see them. So, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. <laughs> if I could see I the picture, I would you take You're so gorgeous. Nice. How do you get a so picture so with you? <laughs> How do you dress yourself this good? Yeah, why are you trying to leave us? So what you saw is... Quite fascinating in as much as number one, often guys are asking me about spitting game. Now, spitting game is a critical piece and there's a lot you can achieve with spitting game. And in fact, uh, persistence overcomes resistance. So the game is going to win a lot. As has been said, conversation can rule the nation. But there's certainly also something to be said for uh, natural appeal, sex appeal, swagger, uh, posture, <gasps> tonation. Uh, there, there are all of these other things that are, and some of them being intangible, that represent a man. You know, the way you might shave your beard, the hairstyle you choose to have, or in my case, not to have, uh, the way you speak, the way you walk, the way you dress. All of these are various forms of capital that you should want to put at your disposal. And we can see that all of these capitals were in full effect before I even opened my mouth. That's number one. Okay, we have Vilka said, because she's seen me talk to another female at work. She has decent quality, like cooking for me and letting me drive her car, but I'm trying to get the finances from her. How would you go about this, Saint? <laughs> well, number one, it seems as though you're already on the path. The key is first you have to get her to verify that she has those, those strong feelings for you. And then what you're essentially doing to her is what women do to men, which is to make her show the proof that she's actually into you at the level she says she's into you. So when you feel like she's really in that position of really being smitten with you, you demonstrate a need. Hey, I have this need and yeah. you are the woman who totally. loves me. You are the woman who's supposed to be there for me. Break bread or play dead. Carrying on. 
Oh, and by the way, you're, you're not going to make a demand of her. You're going to put it out there and let the expectation take over and let her rise to the occasion. You shouldn't have to ask. And if if it's the case that you feel as though she's not about to step up, you know, go ahead and set her to the side and then she'll go ahead and hop in there. Sorrow says those picture girls are like those shoe, cle- shoe cleaners at the mall. You pray to God, don't look at you. I remember looking at one of them for half a second and the entire group looked at me like I owe them. Yeah, they're they're a special group. And um, I wonder how much they make on a, on a given day. It's strange that they choose to use that, use their time for such a thing. But one thing I've said many times is that you can't have winners without having losers can't be at the top of the mountain unless you're standing on someone who's at the bottom of it. So it, it just is what it is. But you have to, one, never confuse yourself into like associating with folks that are not quite in the class that you're in because we're all in the class that we're in based on our decisions, not based on where we were born, what color we were born, but based on our decisions, based on our hustle, based on our self view and how we live out in this world. But yeah, they're, they're a special type. There's no doubt about that. Now, the other piece I want to share with you guys is that, let me re- rewind this clip back. So so picture with you. <laughs> how you dress yourself this good? Yeah, why are you trying to leave us? <laughs> So what you saw was that, and this is, you really need to understand this game about the female and the female nature. Attention fills the female with indifference. Huh? You give them inten- attention, they're indifferent toward you. Conversely, indifference fills the female with passion, which is to say you ignore them or show that you're disinterested. You have greater priorities, perhaps. Maybe you're focused on the bag. Maybe your eyes are on the prize. Those are the things that fill the female with passion. As they are not an animal of being direct, they are an animal of indirection. And you are speaking their language when you show them no regard. It actually turns them on. And in this case, you see that I clearly have no interest in them for a variety of reasons. Blind or not, I'd have no interest. Now, thank God, even as a blind man, I knew that they weren't that attractive. They just, I probably take the sloppy toppy, but not much more than that. The skinny one might get beat down just because she's skinny you can do with that. But all in all, I wasn't interested. And you see that they they put on the pursuit. And uh, if you can read the subtext, it was deeper than they just want to get a photo and pay five bucks. This is the kind of, these two females, these are the kind of females that when you meet them, once you've assessed that they're interested in you, if you're aggressive enough, you can go ahead and smack them down right then. And I'm talking about like within 10 or 15 minutes of meeting them. You know, you can have them dip off somewhere private with you, beat them down, and send them back. But these are the kind of females that are generally whimsical, unreliable, not on time, not a person of their word. So even if they're physically interested in you when you first meet them, if you were to take down her contact information and later that night or on the weekend, you might not even be able to connect and get anything accomplished because that is their personality. You have to be able to extrapolate that the female who is in this job, which is a job that's not easy. You're walking on hills. You're half dressed in cold weather. You're having to interact with strangers for $5 here, $10 there. You're getting embarrassed and ignored on a regular basis. That female that would subject herself to that kind of thing is a lower class person, a person who's irresponsible and is going to be hard to reconnect with whether she's interested interested in you or not. Furthermore, she's not a high intelligent person, a high intelligence person. Therefore, if you were to connect with her in a legitimate date, dinner, uh, going out to, you know, have Dave and Busters or what have you, there's nothing for conversation because she doesn't have brain cells for you to interact with. And that's why it would be so difficult. And so the kind of interaction I just encountered them in, if I would have just been like, you know, trying to smack them down within like 10 to 15 minutes of shaking their hand, that could have happened. And that's really this kind of female. She's the kind that likes that situation. That's her bread and butter. You meet her at the party down right then and there in the party, in the bathroom. You meet her at the club, take her, take her back to the hotel down. You meet her on the strip, you know, take her to the spot down. That's how most of her relationships have proceeded. A woman who's dressed in skinny clad standing on the boulevard is not a woman who's had a lot of long-standing legitimate uh, romantic relationships with men.